Hello everybody. So this week's topic in forestry skills is chainsaw safety and use. So the first part of using a chainsaw and um, probably in my mind the second most important thing is really getting an understanding of PPE. The first most important thing is really understanding the piece of equipment that you're using and what it does and how to how to use it. But the second thing is what do you need to be wearing to make sure that when you're operating this piece of equipment you're being as safe as possible and you're going you have done everything to make sure to avoid injury. And so um, the PPE um, is going to be very similar to um, what we've talked about with um, fire and with herbicide use which is nice because if you're doing all these things as a forester or as a um, as a, a rangeland specialist or a rangeland technician or forest technician, you're, you're wearing relatively the same thing every single day. So that's good. Um, but gloves, um, and I have a, a scar on my hand to prove that, um, that even if the chainsaw is not running, you should still wear your gloves at all times. Uh, helmet, uh, eye and ear protection. And, um, unlike the other ones where ear protection wasn't really necessary, Ear protection is vital um, with the chainsaw because it is a loud piece of equipment and you're going to be running it at full speed and um, it's definitely necessary to make sure that you're protecting your hearing. Uh, your eye protection is also very critical. Now, you there are um, some helmets that are eye ear protection um, built in or you can have those things as well or you can do both. Um, but there's little pieces that are going to be flying uh, here, there, and everywhere when using a chainsaw. So really make sure that um, that you've got your eye protection uh, as well because you don't want those little things getting in your eyes. Uh, leather boots, uh, which we talked about. Chaps. So chaps are going to be um, basically um, um, Kevlar that go um, over the top of your pants. Um, some some pants, if you're doing a lot of specialty chainsaw work, will have um, chaps material built into the pants. But basically, it's just a protective layer that goes over your pants. And what will happen is if you accidentally saw close to your leg and hit the chaps, the chaps have a material in them that will bind up in the saw and basically get the saw to stop before you go further. And so that's, that's important. Um, it was always, uh, when I was doing... Uh, wildland firefighting, it was always a sense of pride or a uh, kind of a big thing that if you could run the saw a long time and never nick your chaps or never uh, hit your chaps. And uh, the majority of the time that I saw when people were uh, having problems with nicking their chaps or or getting the saw gunked up because they, they uh, hit their chaps, is it's not swinging the saw or moving the saw, it's getting tired and trying to rest the saw on their leg or trying or holding the saw down because they're they're not running it and not or getting tired those were the types of um, times that you saw um, people hitting their chaps long sleeves um, it's not technically necessary but I just think anytime you're doing prescribed fire anytime you're doing chainsaw work anytime you're doing uh, herbicide work unless you want your skin to be rough and, and full of cuts and and have all that 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 long sleeves are just uh, really important in terms of just protecting yourself and and trying to leave the work site looking better than you did when you got there um, and then the last part of this it's not really PPE but it's just a reminder of no dangling material no like pants that are frayed at the bottom or Leaving your shirt um, untucked uh, with a bunch of little strings hanging out. Little stuff that can get caught. Because when you're cutting with a chainsaw, you need to move. You need to kind of get out of the way of some things. And you don't want to get caught on anything or stuck um, when you need to move. So here's just uh, another look at some of that stuff. So eye protection. You can go with the big um, ski goggle type look or at least just... A pair of glasses most people it's sunglasses because you're doing this in the middle of the day uh, your typical hel work helmet uh, gloves um, you the idea of the gloves and the same thing with the boots are are leather um, in here 
I, they do make um, some chainsaw specific gloves that are uh, made of different materials. Um, some are um, that kind of uh, like shock resistant because the, the chainsaw moves and vibrates um, quite a bit or, or vibration uh, resistant sort of gloves. But at, at a minimum, leather gloves, leather boots, because those those materials are hard to hard to cut through. And so in what we're talking about, um, kind of going back to the basic um, firefighter clothing as well, but just kind of seeing the look. So we got our, our hard hats on, we've got eye protection, we got ear protection, we've got on the leather gloves, we've got on the chaps, we've got on the long, long sleeves with long pants, and then more than likely leather boots underneath. And we're focused on the saw or other person's nice and um, close enough to uh, to us that we can communicate but also not standing where they're in any bit of harm's way so good work being done right here nice safe work full of PPE so then what I was saying before the the important part is really understanding this this piece of equipment and how to use it which is going to be what the what the lab is about the first lab this week, which is just going to be watching a video about how to how to fell a tree and how to go through that whole process of using a chainsaw. And so we really want to understand the the parts of a chainsaw and making sure we understand um, just the very basics of it and and how it works. And so we've got our our engine our engine body here. We've got our starter handle. We've got our handle. Um, that we're going to be holding with our with our one hand that's not back here on the trigger or on the throttle. Uh, we've got our, our handbrake, which is going to be very important to be using our brake all the time. We've got uh, our chain catcher. We've got our um, we've got our dogs up here. We've got our chain, and we've got our guide bar, which the chain moves around the guide bar. And then down here, we've got our oil, our fuel and our oil. So let's look at it again. So our engine body here, we got our um, starter cord handle. We've got our throttle and we've got our safety throttle. Um, you'll also hear people refer to it as the trigger. Either way, uh, your it says bumper, but it mean it's bumper spikes, or um, the way I've always heard them referred to uh, are your dogs. And so you've got your dogs up here, and those are used for when you are um, cutting wood. So you, um, you're supposed to put your dogs into the wood, and then move your saw your your saw blade into the wood. And so you try and get these. Uh, you plant that into the wood, and then you bring your saw down onto the wood. To cut through it you've got your chain and they left the chain nice and loose here so you can see you've got um, your cutters that would be on top here but on the bottom you can also see there's these things that we call the drivers and those go into the uh, the guide bar and so your drivers are driving the chain through the guide bar so that it can keep rotating the basically the driver um, the bottom of the chain kind of looks like the state of texas the bottom part of the state of Texas, and that, that little driver goes through the guide bar and keeps the chain moving. You got your oil and your fuel. Your oil is going to be um, most of the time or all the time closer to the bar because the oil is um, trying to keep everything lubricated, whereas your fuel um, is usually towards the back or farther away from the, from the bar. Going it over it again because we're just trying to get as comfortable as we can. Uh, we got our front, um, our front hand guard or our brake. Very important to be able to use that. Uh, our muffler is also located in the front, right underneath the brake. You got your oil, your fuel, you got your trigger, you got your rear hand guard, which is where. Um, um, that's another word for the for the tr throttle safety or the trigger safety, and we got our rear handle. 
And so if you're saying, well, why do we keep going over the parts of this thing? Because the thing is, I really want you to get comfortable just with the parts of a chainsaw because you have to understand how this thing is put together to really know how to use it correctly. And so we're going to go over a couple specific um, brands of chain just to just to kind of give you an idea of how they look slightly different and but really the same. So here is a still or steel, depending on your uh, pronunciation of the German word. Uh, you've got your guide bar and you've got your chain. And then you can kind of get a better look at those drivers hanging down there. And those drivers go into the guide bar and we get the chain to move around the, the guide bar. Uh, right here uh, is where your chain tensioner is going to be. So the idea that this chain is loose here, there's usually um, a little screw. It's usually a flathead screw um, that, you, that you use to tighten the chain. Now one thing that's going to be important to... to remember is that you've got your um, your um, bar nuts here that are going to be um, keeping this plate on here and keeping the guide bar on to the saw. If you tighten these uh, bar nuts down all the way before your chain tightener you won't be able to tighten the chain enough. You have to tighten the chain first before you um, screw your bar nuts down all the way. Just a, just a thing to remember. Uh, you have a spark plug in the carburetor box here, and you can take all that apart uh, if you need to. And the engine is hiding here behind the um, the cover plate on this side. And the fuel tank is right here at the back because if we flip this thing around, our fuel um, cap would be on the other side. Here is a Husqvarna. And so everything should be look uh, the same we got our muffler right here we've got our chain brake uh, right here we've got our front handle we've got our oil we've got our gas we've got our guide bar we've got our chain and our chain would be moving this way the drivers are moving it through here we've got our bumper spikes or our dogs right there we've got our cylinder cover with our spark plug hiding underneath we've got our starter handle they call it a throttle lock here, or throttle lock, throttle safety, uh, whatever you want to call it. We've got our throttle or our trigger back here. Um, there's a choke uh, feature on this one that's usually located um, where your um, instead of a on-off switch, you basically have a a stop stop choke switch, and then our rear handle towards the back. McCullough, it's just another brand. Um, there's also, there's other brands, um, lots of other brands, Poland, Echo, uh, Oregon, um, all sorts of ones, but just, just kind of giving you that same idea. So, uh, bumper spikes. I like this one because you get to see both sides of the saw. And I, I've shown you in the other ones, it's usually one side or the other. So, um, you got looking at the the left side of the saw here you got your oil you got your fuel your your um stop switch stop choke switch you got your trigger you got your trigger lock or trigger safety whatever you want to call it starter rope you got your um car your cylinder cover carburetor box you got your front handle guard you got your handle looking at the the right side we've got our bar nuts we've got our clutch cover we got our chain catcher here so what that is it's, it's usually um some uh, piece of, of metal um basically that sticks out right here so that if this chain flips off or comes off for a reason instead of coming and being able to hit you it gets it hits this and then gets stuck right there and and that way it doesn't um if it if something goes wrong it doesn't come flying off uh, here it's called an adjusting screw, but that's that same chain tensioner that we were talking about before. And then this is uh, your guide bar, your chain, shows you the direction of travel on the chain. And then it's got your, um, it goes a little bit in depth on the chain itself. So you got your cutter part, which is back here. You got your depth gauge, which is in between um, this, the, the guide and the, and the cutter. And then you've got your drive links or, or your drivers that are working the chain through the guide bar.
and then the same things that we've talked about just looking at them from the other side and then we'll talk about um, your your tools uh, in a little bit so here's here's an echo now you'll see that this is uh, finally a different looking saw because what we what we've gone over is the basic model of chainsaw but um, if you're gonna go into urban forestry um, or if you're gonna do work around the house really a small saw like this is uh, much much easier to handle and I mean it's available up to 12 inches so you know if you're cutting trees that are um, anything 12 inches or less uh, which is the majority of what you're probably cutting around the house or in urban forestry a saw like this is much easier to handle and um, and uh, just so much lighter so much easier you can do some some things a lot a lot easier so we have our handle we have our brake we've got our guide bar we've got our chain here we've got um, we've got gas and oil so we got our oil right there and we got our gas down here um, we've got our starter handle here and we got our um, it says that there's an air cleaner on the side uh, what's different about this one because this one's made for arborists is back here there's a lanyard clip so that you can actually clip it to a belt and um, climb trees and take it up with you uh, you got your engine towards the back here you got a uh, a little uh, primer purge bulb right here your throttle lock is up top with your with your throttle underneath so slightly different but pretty much the same kind of basic makeup to the saw so what kind of tools do you need to to be able to to run a chainsaw at the very least we need this guy right here um, sometimes called a bar wrench but what I've heard most is a scrunch because we got our um, we got our flathead screw part over here and then we've got our our wrench part up top where we can um, be able to take off the bar nuts and sometimes with the smaller saws you have smaller bar nuts so um, the more typical size saw that's going to be the right size bar nut but sometimes you're going to have to flip it around and use that side um, to be able to uh, take off the bar nuts but that this little tool you'll find um, some some saws even come with it um, a, a space for it. I have an echo saw where there's a space uh, underneath the saw where this thing actually stays with the saw at all times. Other things you might need is a smaller um, flathead screwdriver. Uh, there's this uh, little fish hook thing here which is good for cleaning um, dirt out of the guide bar and other places. Um, these, this right here um, uh, is for sharpening the saw. If you uh, don't want to take it to somebody or you don't want to use a uh, machine to sharpen it, this is for hand sharpening. This is to check um, your cutters, see if the angle's right, and see if the um, um, uh, depth on your cutters is good. And down here, there's like a little um, almost hook like that where it's for cleaning out the, the guy bar. And you have a, a flathead um, file. You got a flat file here. Um, that you can use as well. Do you need all these tools? Some people do, some people don't. What do you need at the very minimum? You need this guy, the scrunch. Gotta have the scrunch no matter what. So here's another kit. Um, in this kit you'll see there's our scrunch. Key important thing. Um, our little flathead screwdriver. Um, some safety equipment. We got um, earplugs, that sort of a thing, and our glasses our sharpening stuff right here uh, you'll see this this is for being able to put it into a piece it's a kind of like a portable vice where you can put it into a piece of wood and lock in your saw so that you can sharpen it that's just a file handle and then this is the other thing so if I had to say that you definitely needed to have another thing with you you should always carry a wedge with you if you're going to be felling trees if you're not felling trees if you're not um, cutting trees down you don't need you don't need to have a wedge with you all you need is the scrunch but if you are going to cut any trees down it's always a good idea to keep a wedge with you and something to be able to hammer the wedge in so 
we've gone over the parts of the chainsaw. We've gone over the PPE that you should be wearing. So how do we actually do this and do it safely? So just looking at, at the things, the parts that we talked about earlier, but the ones that we're specifically just looking at here in terms of the idea of safety. And so we've got the chain break. So what the chain break does is that when you hit the chain break forward, that chain gets stopped. No matter if it's going at full speed, no matter if it's um, barely going, you hit that and it stops. Now, it is not good to have the saw running at full speed and hit the chain break. It will stop, but you're going to um, screw up your clutch by doing that. It's better to, if you can, let the saw, you run the saw at full speed, you let go of the, tr the throttle, let go of the trigger, it finally slows down. Once it stops spinning, then put on the brake. That's the best way to, to deal with the, with the brake. But if you hit it and turn it on, it will stop. Back towards you is off, away from you is on. You have the safety trigger lock. So when you're running this thing, you have to press down on top of it to be able to uh, run the trigger. If you just try and press from the bottom, nothing's going to happen. You have to press the safety down on top and then squeeze the bottom to be able to turn this thing on. Uh, we got, you've got a spark arrestor on the still models that'll just, um, hopefully keep things from catching fire. You got your chain catch pin, which is the, um, that piece of metal that'll keep the chain from basically flying off, off of this thing if something goes wrong. And then, um, your, your hand guard to kind of, um, help keep your hand in place. Uh, you got, the same uh, chain break here on the Husqvarna model. Uh, this one has a felling sight, so you'll see this line kind of going down this. So as you're using this to fell a tree, they've actually set up this line so that you can help line yourself up correctly so that you have a guide that you can aim at as to where you want the, the tree to fall down. Uh, you can get things called um, low kickback chain, which is the kickback area is this front part right here or that front part right there, where if you hit things um, with that part, the chain saw might kick back at you. And so the idea of the chain, low kickback chain, is to keep that from happening. Uh, they've got some anti-vibration mounts to try and make it a little bit easier on you because if you've ever run a chainsaw before, that thing can move. And you will, your forearms will be tired if you run it for a long time. Um, so those are some of the, the features that are more specific to just uh, safety. So why, why mention safety and make such a big deal about it? Because it is America's deadliest job. So this is in 2013, trust me. It's still up there and because it's always been up there. So fatal occupation injuries per 100,000 full-time workers. There were 91 uh, fatal injuries in terms of walking, uh, working. And here's another uh, way to look at it. So chainsaw operator, 46% of all these, of the, of the, uh, this, this um, pie graph on the, on the right is looking at the specific jobs um, within a logging crew, like who gets hurt in a logging crew. Specifically, the person running the chainsaw is getting almost half of those injuries. So when it says logging workers, of these 91 workers, just about half of them are specifically the chainsaw operator who's getting killed or, or getting hurt. So how is that happening? Well, usually it's when you're cutting down trees and it's usually something happening um, during during the tree fall and so we really want to make sure that we do our best to learn how to how to cut down trees properly and that's because and the reason this happens is trees are really hard to deal with some of them are huge some of them if something goes wrong it's something it happens really quick it's something that weighs uh tons and something that you can't um, 
that that you might not be able to avoid. And so it's really important to understand how do we protect ourselves and what can we do to really avoid having any of this stuff happen to us. And so this um, this little graphic right here really focuses on the idea of why do we wear what we wear. So um, PPE required. So we want to make sure we wear a face shield or safety glasses um, because we don't want to get anything um, hitting us in the eye or getting anything that flies into our eyes. Um, do we want to get hit in the head? No. So we need to be wearing a hard hat anytime something could hit us from above. Really, I mean, I wear a hard hat anytime I have a hard hat and I'm doing this work, but definitely if there's anything above my head, even if it's branches, anything above my head means a hard hat. Um, you could get something um, flying into your leg, you could get cut by the saw blade, or in uneven or wet conditions, you could fall down or get some sort of an injury. So we want to make sure we're wearing our our um, leather boots and if we can cut resistant um, boots the steel toe i'm not a huge fan of because um if it's uh it depends on if you're doing firefighting or not uh, but they have pretty much got the technology where it doesn't matter um, nowadays for that but you want to you want um, leather boots and then you want cut resistant leg covering so that usually for most people is chaps or the the pants with the chaps material built in and then uh, our hand hazards so um, getting our hands crushed uh, vibration problems um, penetration something getting um, shoved into our hands or abrasions cuts and so we, we want leather work gloves or the anti-vibration gloves if if we can um, if we want those we also can have stuff like noise being a problem just the fact that these things are loud and especially if we're running a lot of chainsaws for a long amount of time so making sure we're wearing hearing protection and then if we're dealing with bucket trucks or we're climbing trees or anything like that worrying about falling so making sure we've done everything to protect ourselves in terms of harnesses and um, locking into to things to make sure to avoid falling so if we get hurt uh, doing this stuff where do we get hurt so what you'll see in this graphic here on the left is that the majority of injuries seem to be on the left hand side here and so what I would say to you and you can see it here as well that there's so many more things on the left hand side and so what I would say to you is with that is chainsaws are designed to be used by right-handed people and so if the majority of stuff in terms of injuries is happening on our left side that's because we're going across our body and so when we talk about operation in a little bit one thing you're going to hear me talk about is always keeping the saw on one side of your body and everything staying on the one side of your body because if you do that the the way that the chainsaw is designed is that uh, the the blade is on the outside so if you're right-handed the engine's going to be here or the engine blocks gonna be here and the blade is and bar is out here so if you keep it on your right side everything is away from your body but what you'll see is people coming across their body like this and that is why you get all of these injuries on the left hand side of the body much more than the right hand side of the body so um, going back to our fatal accidents how do they happen when um, we're cutting down a tree how do we get these what are the biggest problems poor felling technique seems to be a big one and hanging other trees up and so what that is is if you're cutting down a tree next to a bunch of other trees you cut it and it starts to fall and it hits another tree and gets stuck and then you have to fall two trees or you have to fall three trees and you have to have a couple trees fall at the same time and that can get really messy and so that's a that's a problem poor felling techniques another problem and then the another big one is working too close and um, and I think if you say working too close poor communication 
comes into that because you're using loud equipment. You're all wearing ear protection. You really have to be really good on your nonverbal communication or really, really loud with your voice. Oops, let me go back real quick. Uh, things that we also want to avoid. This is that idea of kickback on these ones here. So, talked about taking the saw across your body. Let's start there. Right here, you can see this technique here, not keeping it on his right hand side. He's bringing it across his body, and therefore he has put himself in this kickback zone. So, if this front here, the blade, would hit something, this saw will jerk back. And if it jerks back, I don't want it to jerk back to my head. If I keep the saw off to the side of my body and it jerks back, it jerks back here. Not, not great that it jerked back, but it jerked back to where nothing was a problem. If I'm cutting like this and it jerks back, that's problematic. Uh, how do I avoid kickback? So I don't want to bore in with the front part of my blade. I want to bore in on the bottom part of my blade. I also want to avoid hitting other things while I'm cutting something. So right here I'm cutting this log, but if the front of my blade hits that, that could cause some kickback. Uh, another thing is if I'm boring into this tree and cutting into this tree and I'm hitting, um, I think I'm cutting down here, but I'm actually hitting up here, that could cause kickback. But Really, our big thing to avoid um, also um, is just making sure we're not cutting across our body. You can see the way that this saw is turned. If it kicks back, it's kicking back to his left-hand side, which is um, problematic. And that's what we're trying to avoid. The other thing you want to avoid, too, is if you're cutting like this, um, it, we don't want branches or other things to come up and hit us when we cut them loose. The other thing that I would say, which is this picture here on the far right, is two feet on the ground at all times when you're cutting using a chainsaw. Now, the only exception to that is if you're an arborist and you've been trained in climbing and you've got proper climbing equipment, then you go right ahead and you climb that tree and you cut it down because you have the proper training. Everybody else, two feet on the ground, um, at all times when using a chainsaw. And the other thing is the chainsaw, um, the engine block here should go no higher than your shoulders. Because if it's, if it's lower than your shoulders, you got a lot of control of it. If it's up here and it moves around, you don't have as much control over what you're doing. So no higher than your shoulders. And then the other thing I would say to avoid kickback here, is the idea of learning how to turn. So if I want to cut something that's over here, I don't move the chainsaw, I turn my body and cut over here. And I need to cut back here, I turn my body and cut here. I need to cut something right there, I turn my body and cut. So everything's still on that right hand side bar away from my body because I don't want to hurt myself. So chainsaw operation. Are we wearing all the proper PPE? Yep. Looks good. Oh, he's got the chainsaw turned. Is he doing this in a bad way? No, because look where his right leg is look where the chainsaw is if this thing kicks back the, the bar is going to kick back out here away from his body yes you can turn this thing sideways and run it sideways just as long as you're not putting your body in the way and he's moved himself out of the way to where if this thing kicks out it's going to kick out away from his body ear protection eye protection long sleeves long pants um, these are probably more than likely those pants with the um, with Kevlar or whatever material built into them. Uh, and we've got our gloves on. Looking good. So, five steps um, to, to really kind of help yourself out. Know your saw. Like I said, I think that's the most important. And so does this graphic. Um, know what you're doing and be comfortable with what you're doing. Really familiarize, familiarize yourself. Um, with the chainsaw. Protect yourself 
PPE, goggles, boots, gloves, hand protection, hard hat, chaps. Perform a startup inspection. So when you start, um, before you start up the saw, look at everything. How tight is the chain? Uh, put the chain brake on and off. Do you hear that clicking sound to know the, the chain brake's working? Look at your guide bar. Is it bent or crooked? in any way how clean is your saw the cleaner the saw the better the saw is going to run um is it do you have uh new gas in there if you want to really have a frustrating day running chainsaw use old gas because it'll take forever to start up and then it'll do this start up and stop and start up and stop thing when if you when you gas up a chainsaw you want to put in enough gas to do whatever job you're doing so that you run out of gas every single time because you do not want old gas just sitting in your saw it sucks and it is super frustrating to use old gas you want to use new gas every time you want to make sure there's oil in there and you want to make sure the chain is lubricated so the other thing is you um, with when the saw is off you take the chain brake off and you move the chain through the through the guide bar and see is the chain moving smoothly through the through the bar to know do we need to clean the bar do, is the saw being lubricated enough um, the other thing you can then do is you turn on the saw you start it up and you run it at full speed you hear it listen make sure everything's sounding good and then you um, turn the tip towards the towards the ground and you run it again and you can look and see if you have um, oil and you have lubrication coming off the off the bar um, coming onto the ground uh, usually works well if you have like a piece of concrete as opposed to grass it's hard to see the oil coming off in the grass but um, you put your the tip of your bar close enough to the ground to where the oil can uh, leak off so you can see okay it is getting lubricated put the brake on let the thing warm up and you're good to go and then if you're going to be um, Anytime you're going to be doing work, make sure that you have an escape route, a way to get out if, you know, this uh, bush comes falling down on you, or um, especially if you're cutting down or felling trees, you have to have a safe, safe route, safety uh, zone and an escape route. And then you should always bring a first aid kit or have an EMT or some somebody who knows something um, just in case things go wrong. And so our cutting position, which you've heard me already talk about, but the idea is saws are made for people who are right-handed. If you're left-handed, I'm sorry, you're going to have to learn how to cut right-handed because they do not make left-handed chainsaws. So you're going to keep the saw blade always on your right-hand side. So it shows this line right here. Check out that line. They call it the plane of chain rotation. But anywhere that they cut is going to be nowhere near their body we're not ever going to go across our body we're never going to go just reach over here we're going to turn if we've got to go that way we're going to turn our whole body and really make sure nothing is in the way it is the first thing that everybody does wrong in my mind the second thing everybody does wrong is for some reason you'll stick your thumb out here instead of having a full grip around and I think that's because people are used to driving like that instead of doing that but you want to these things vibrate a lot and you want to have a good solid grip on there we want all of our uh, PPE on at all times and then the other thing that we want to think about is once we make these cuts are we out of the way so notice this line right here so that line right there we don't want to be in front of that so this guy actually needs to back up his foot because when this drops then drop and roll onto his foot or drop straight onto his foot and so you really want to make sure that you're also back far enough that when you're cutting these um, pieces of wood down that nothing is landing on your feet you got you always want to remember you got your brake right here and usually because of the way where your handle is positioned you can usually just use your wrist like that to turn the brake on and then you can take the brake off if necessary um, when you run the saw it should be run at full speed 
your choices are not running the saw and running the saw at full speed. You will hear people throttle up and go rum, 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 rum. And you'll see people sawing back and forth. It, it, the machine is made to do the work. The machine is made to run at full speed. So just depress the throttle all the way and just move through the wood, not saw through the wood, move nice and smoothly through the wood. And yes, did I have my hands up here? It's only because I need to show you on the, on the uh, camera. Everything should be done below your shoulders. Keep it far away from your head. So here's another look. Now, what I'd like you to say, to look at here on this left hand side is, is there anything wrong with what he's doing? I'll give you a few seconds. Did you get it? The answer is, he's not wearing any gloves. If you also said he's not wearing long sleeves, good catch. If you also said, well, his leg is kind of protected, but might not be in a great place, I'd accept all three of those things. Um, but here are some safety tips uh, that are important. Clear dirt, debris, small trees, limbs, rocks from the saw chain's path. Look for nails, spikes, or metals in the in the tree. That's you know that's something that happens. Uh, you want to shut off the saw or engage the chain break when carrying on rough or even terrain. So what I would say is I'd even take that a step further and I'd say you're either cutting something or you have the chain break on and the saw is not running because th those should be your if you want to be as safe as possible. That's it. The chain should only be going. Uh, at full speed if you're cutting into something if you're not if you're moving from one place to another that sort of thing chain brake on and the chain shouldn't be moving you don't have to turn the saw all the way off but the brake should definitely be on if you're not cutting keep your hands on the saw's handle and maintain secure footing during the operation wear pro proper ppe cut carefully so that trunks or tree limbs don't bind against the saw so that's going to be learning um tension and compression and the idea of if I'm cutting this branch right here is it going to go down or is this branch going to go up when I cut it and that's going to help me determine do I come down into it or do I come up into it because if this thing's going to go down I'd want to come up like this so that it goes down and it breaks away but if this thing's going to go up and I come up like this and it goes up then it just binds onto my saw and my saw gets stuck and then somebody has to come uh, cut me out or I've got to sit there and yank it and I might screw up my chain or bend my bar so it's really important to understand um, tension and compression you want to watch out for branches under tension or compression because they can come whacking you and you want to watch out for kickback which we've talked about um, before starting, check, do that, that pre-start check. Uh, make sure all your bolts are tight, your chain's tight. You got the fuel and the oil, everything's the way it's supposed to be. Make sure the chain is sharp. You always want to use sharp chain. Using dull chain just uh, make, makes your day miserable. Uh, start the saw on the ground, definitely. Um, the other proper way to do it would be to... Um, to hold the chainsaw sideways so like he is holding it here you could hold it sideways with the blade away from you and you could pull it because when you're doing that that sort of a pull start even if the the blade jerks it's going to jerk away from you you put the rear guard behind your right knee and you put the you'd have your left hand on the handle your right hand would be pulling the starter cord that's the only other safe way besides putting it on the ground and start the saw at least 10 feet from the fueling area because we don't want to cause a fire. Now if we fuel a saw, we want to use appropriate containers for the fuel. We want to be 10 feet from any source of ignition. We want to use a funnel because we don't want to make a mess and we do not ever fuel a saw that is running. And so the last part that we're going to talk about is the idea of tree felling. So how do we take a standing tree 
and we put it onto the ground. Now I've got some videos. Um, the lab is going to be a video, but I also have some videos attached um, to the lecture uh, that you can watch uh, that'll hopefully help kind of paint this picture for you. And so things that we want to remember. Um, the big thing that I want you guys to remember is um, this part right here, which is your uh, face cut. So um, the face is the direction that we want the tree to fall. So your face cut here, or on this diagram right here, your, your first and second cut make up your face cut. It only has to be a third of the tree in. And so when you see this guy and you're like, oh, you put in this tiny little face cut, that's a good normal sized face cut. A lot of people will cut halfway into that tree or three quarters of the way into the tree. That really weakens the tree and really puts you in in a little bit of danger. You only want to go a quarter of the way, a third of the way into the tree's diameter with your face cut and you want to let your back cut or your felling cut do most of the work. And you want about a tenth of the tree to be that hinge to let the tree fall down. Our face cut's going to be in our direction of fall, so we're going to basically make a little mouth. And that mouth is supposed to basically close to let the tree fall down. So you, you put in um, either way. Um, I, this right here is kind of the older way to do it. You do a first flat cut, and then you do an angle cut to make your make your um, your face cut. But a lot of people are doing the angle cut first and then the flat cut. It just depends on what's easier and what works best for you. But you make your little face cut or your mouth, and then you'll go to the back of the tree. You'll make your back cut with your hinge that then allows the hinge back here, allows the face cut to close, and allows the tree to fall where you want it to fall. If we're going to be doing tree felling, we really, 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 really want to make sure that we have um, a safety zone and an escape route to our safety zone. And so here we're going to fell this tree in this direction. So we want to make sure we have a safety zone um, on 45 degree angles. We have escape routes to our safety zones, which usually are about 15 feet away. And we want to, so we want to be able to get at least 15 feet away from this thing. And we want to be able to do it on 45 degrees. And if you say to yourself, well, how will I know what 45 degrees is? Pretty simple. You know what 90 is because you've got straight ahead. You got straight behind, and then 90s are out to the sides. So where do I want to go? I don't want to go straight out to the sides, and I don't want to go straight back. I want to go in the middle of that. That's a 45. And so I want to go at least 15 feet away on a 45-degree angle. So my escape route is anything in between the tree and my um, 15 feet away safety zone. So I want to make sure my escape route is clear. No little stumps on the ground or anything that I can trip over. Not that I'm going to be running away from this thing, because I am definitely not going to be running. Your, safe, your escape route should be clear enough that you can have a nice, easy walk to your safety zone. But I don't. I want to know. I I want you to understand that all of this is the danger zone for where this thing could fall. And so you really want to make sure you get oh, far enough away that you are not going to be worried, and you can watch the thing fall down. So you'll see right here that there is, um, oops, let me go back real quick. I've got a tree felling uh, YouTube video right here as well as um, a video, another YouTube video that talks about the notch cuts. Go ahead, press pause, take a look at those videos, and then um, you can finish up this video, this lecture, which all we're talking about is the five-step felling plan which you're going to assess the site, assess the tree, prepare your work area and your escape route, use the correct safe felling techniques, and then retreat and look up to make sure that we are making, making sure that we are watching our tree come down and making sure we're not uh, in harm's way. That last one is important with the idea of look up and what we were just talking about before. So the reason why my escape route needs to be clear, needs to not have little 
little stumps or little things that could trip me up or be problematic is the idea that I want to walk away and be able to look up at the tree. I don't want to have to look down to see are my feet clear because I need to keep an eye on the tree that it's going the right way. And so it's really important to be able to have that clean escape route to your safety zone so that we can watch the tree fall down nice and safely. So a five-step felling plan. Assess the site, assess the tree, prepare your work area and escape route. So make sure our escape route's clean. Make sure it's easy for us to be able to cut this tree down. Use our safe felling techniques, which you will learn about in this video and in the video for lab and then retreat and look up to make sure that the tree is falling the correct way. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned um, something about uh, chainsaw safety and use, and I hope that you get to actually use a chainsaw one day because it is actually a fun piece of equipment as long as you know how to do it right and do it safely.